atmosphere, um, we'll, we'll first have a straight shot of, of Earth looking backwards from behind us. Earth is in, to the left of that, vi that view. Um, the great thing is, as, as it's coming in, we have two orbiters. You'll see them come into view in just a second. Uh, first, MRO from, from the south working the way north, and this is about the time that MRO is recording information that MSL is, is uh, sending out to the world. At the same time, um, Odyssey, which is coming in from the top part of the view, is listening to what MSL is doing. And right now, MSL is, is, is send, sending information through Odyssey, and Odyssey is repeating that information straight back, straight back to Earth, and that's what we're seeing in this room tonight. And you see where Odyssey is, where it is on the horizon, and, and how far it is, and that's one of the reasons why we have very a very, very narrow window of when yeah. we can... Yeah. This is a pretty tricky dance. Um, the, the, it's been very well choreographed. People like Brian Schratz have done a fantastic job of making sure that all this, the coordination is happening. But it's very, uh, it's, it's, it's easy for this not to work. Um, one of the problems is the antenna is moving around. It gets blocked by by, uh, by equipment as it falls apart, uh, comes, the vehicle comes apart. It's, it is, it, it is something that you can't rely on in a guaranteed sort of way. So if the signal stops, we stop being signaled, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's anything wrong. So we will know fairly soon in the next several minutes whether or not Odyssey's move right. did indeed work and that yes. it will be in position for yes. us to be uh, able to hear That's from. right. Odyssey had to, to get into position. It had to stow its antenna. Uh, the one that goes back to Earth, turn the vehicle so it's pointing at our vehicle and then restow the, the antenna and, and start transmitting. So, it, so what, what it hears from the rover, it, it can re repeat back to Earth. But that process means that it had to stop talking to, to the Deep Space Network for a while while it was doing that. And that's happening right about now. So the point is that people shouldn't get too excited if we don't hear from the rover that's, at that's landing? That's right. We've had problems with communications all along. I mean, the, the, in fact, one of the reasons we put so much effort into this is that so, so that if we do have a real problem, we can use this information to deduce to what, deduce what may have gone wrong. And so, so that's why this information is so essential. But if we don't get it and we land safely, that's still okay too, even though it's just nerve-wracking. Okay, so Rob, we're going to keep you here while All we right. go through entry, descent, and landing. He'll be there to give us his wise oh, knowledge you. and all of this. <laughs> but meantime, let's go back into the MSA and get ready for entry, descent, and landing. Uh, things are looking pretty good right now. I'm getting a report right now from uh, Odyssey that uh, they're in position. Uh, they're they're going to be there for us for EDL. So they have reacquired to the Earth, uh, and we're good to go. So uh, we will have coverage throughout EDL um, through uh, a little bit from about a minute and a half after entry through touchdown and then some. So uh, hopefully we'll see you all the way to the bottom and see a successful landing. Okay. Uh, the EDL activity lead is about to uh, narrate uh, what's going on in the spacecraft. We're entering the EDL prep uh, anchor. That's a EDL uh, slot software mode, so let's listen in. You can see that the nav filter is dropping to the correct state. IBP has stopped, and the EDL prep anchor is complete. Okay, copy that. So we're about three minutes from the HR spent anchor action starting. The EDL activity lead has told us that we're, we've turned off the attitude control system, uh, the crew's attitude control system. We don't need it anymore. Uh, we're standing by for heat rejection system vent. Uh, that's the, uh, the coolant that's been keeping us cool through all of crews. Uh, we'll vent that ahead of cutting Dynamics, the crew stage. So we're coming up on crew stage phase. separation. Go ahead, phase. Um, anytime you guys want to shoot me any results from the Sims to me via email, I guess is the way we're going to go now because the screens are are going to transition into having your beautiful faces on it instead of uh, your estimates from the flight like EDL, the EDL. HR spent actions have begun. Roger. Uh, phase, we should have our EDL viz on there when uh, we get UHF data. Roger. I'm still um, I'm still open for receiving best estimates as they come in on the uh, on the landing location off of the time point correlation. Uh, 
Uh, copy, I understand, and uh, we are on it. You will get it uh, in the usual uh, communication window. Play EDL. The expected Roger. warnings Thank for the Electra hail mode are received. Copy. The EDL team is running some final uh, final simulations to show where uh, we think we're going to end up now? based on the latest awesome. navigation data. Uh, things continue to look good. Uh, it puts us right in the middle of the ellipse. Okay, play. We can confirm the BCB actions have been commanded. And through EHA, we can confirm that the discharge pets are now in manual discharge. The vehicle Copy. power changes in preparation for crew stage separation. It's going to cut loose the crew stage and all that solar array that's been uh, powering us uh, through all of crews. Iro firing card are now powered on. Go ahead, EDLCOM. So we're ready to switch the displays over to the 1010 marker, um, which will show EDL data manual tones. Um, you ready? Uh, standby one. Uh, yes, we are ready. Copy that. All right. And we can confirm through EHA now that the BCBs are in manual charge mode. Copy BCBs and manual charge. We've also completed enabling the pyros commands. We are in the process of powering off the crew stage hardware. Uh, 